and welcome to another episode of Solid State Cinema. And boy, do I have a treat for you. Whoa, maybe a treat for me. Something's coming down the cracker track. Huh, two in a row, pretty good. Anyway, whoa, oh, bam. So what we have here is another episode of the Sansui 7700 amplifier repair, which I did in the past. But I never quite finished it because it went back to the owner. He said, oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you. One of the channels is cutting out, right? So I fixed it. So another treat I have for you is a fellow sent me a bottle of wine. I just happened to be drinking that. Let's cut to the video when he acquired it for me. All right. Hey folks, this is Paul Locke. We're in Mackinac Island and we're at Goodfellows Wine Cellar here on uh, Mackinac Island. And uh, I'm with... Scotty. Scotty. And uh, he's going to try to give us uh, give us some tips on a wine that we're going to buy for Terry uh, at D-Lab. Uh, D-Lab. Yes. And you think that D-Lab would appreciate this wine? Absolutely. All right. So there's our wine. What's it, what's it, what's it called? It's Chardonnay from Black Star okay. Winery okay. called Arturus. All right, what would it be if I didn't try the wine before I bought it, right? So Terry, I'm looking out for you there at D-Labs. All right, Cheers. so Scotty, thank you very much. Mm. Oh, that's very good. Right Terry, you're gonna enjoy it. We're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. So that's our wine. We're gonna bring it back to D-Lab and see how Terry enjoys it. We'll see y'all soon. I'm working on a Sansui AU7700 amplifier. The complaint is, is after it plays for a little while, one channel will go kerbam, and then it'll play normally. And that's usually indication of a bad speaker relay or perhaps bad solder connections on the main amplifier board. So let's take a look at it. Here's our test setup. I've got the D-Lab stereo audio test set and I'm using that old Heath kit scope that I've been playing with I figure it's about time that it does some work for me I've got the bottom off of the Sansui amplifier so there's the AU7700 the bottoms off and my suspicions of course the protect relay there it is and do you see what I see hopefully it's not out of focus there's a big hole in the relay Somebody's been in here messing around. This board also has several pregnant capacitors. I'm sure it's plagued with bad solder connections. So what I'm going to do is power the amp. We're going to monitor it through the audio test set into the scope and see if when I move components, those traces start a jumping. And I bet you they will. So the amp is powered up, no signal applied. I'm watching the speaker outputs with the scope through the dummy loads in the audio test set. So let's start with that relay since I know that somebody's already been in there fooling around with it. I can't show you but down here the little snap tabs at the base there's evidence that these have been pried on. So I bet you that they've had problems with this relay all along. So I'm just gonna rock it. Look at the scope. It. So we either have some terrible solder connections or the relay itself is shot. I'm gambling that it's the relay. There's also several pregnant caps, but I'm not going to fool that. I'm going to power it down, pull this board out, inspect it, and guess what I have? One of the actual protect relays that install in the Sansui. So either way, we're changing the relay, dress up connections, get those uh, pregnant caps out of there, and I bet you she'll work like a million bucks. The pulling this board out of here does not look like loads of fun. It goes underneath of these finals that are on the heat sink assembly. So I'm hoping that I can simply remove the screws, get the heat sink loose, take out these screws up front, and she'll fold over so I can gain access to the bottom of the board. We shall see. Well, pretty amazing. I took out the two up front. I think there's about six around the heat sink assembly. And look, 
it pulls right out. That is absolutely amazing. Oh boy, doesn't that board look nice. All right, I'm gonna get the magnifying glass, inspect it, pull that relay, and hope the base configuration of my new one matches. Well, there's the old relay. You can see the base configuration here. One thing I spotted right there is a little blob of solder between two of the contacts, but it does not appear to be the contacts that are used. But that's pretty interesting. So here's my new relay base. You can see the pins spacing appears to line up. So I'm going to get that thing out of there. So to get the relay out, I prefer to use solder wick. You guys can use your solder suckers or whatever you want to use, your vacuum base things, I don't care. I like to use solder wick because it protects the foil from the heat. Okay, so this is Chemtronics solder wick. It does a great job. You just kind of want to work around the connection, get that old solder out of there, don't keep your iron on there very long, let the wick do the job. Old relay's out, I've got the new relay next to it. One thing of course you always want to verify is the coil resistance. So the original one, a little over 700 ohms. Here's the new one that I'm putting in, close enough to 700. I'm going to get it installed. All right, so as usual, when you're trying to put in a generic replacement relay, you're going to have terminal spacing issues, and I've got it going on here. The coil leads line up just fine, but the switch leads are too narrow. If you look at the spacing of the original, versus the replacement, you'll see these tabs are further apart. So what I'm gonna do is not modify the board. I'm gonna simply take some of my tinned wire. I'm gonna wrap these terminals and come up on the side for the four that I need. These two up here are not used, okay? So we're not gonna worry about that. So I'll get the new modified leads on and this relay will be in in no time with no modifications or damage to the circuit board. So what we're going to do here to get the proper spacing is wrap wire around these terminals down low like this. Okay. Hopefully they will stay in place so I can get them soldered. So there they are in place. Sometimes you got to do this. I don't think you're going to be able to go down to your local electronic store and buy the stock relay for that Sansui. Okay. So I'm going to solder these down close to the base. Like at that. Then, I'm going to clip off these terminals that are improperly spaced. Then I'll bend these wires up like that. And they will be more of a universal fit when I go through that circuit board. I'll be able to tweak them right in. She should mount right up. And remember, the coil leads are okay. So I'm going to get a really good mount here. And then I'll still have the six wires coming up. So the relay is going to seat and solder in just fine. Well, there is the modified relay. Let's get it installed. It'll take a little bit of manipulation, but I'm sure it'll go right in. Here we go. Got the main leads in. Just need to get the 
coils line up. There we go. All right, got her in place. Let's get it soldered in. Start with those coil lugs. Since they have the most mechanical connection to the relay. Be careful on these other leads. I don't want to overheat them and have those little loops that I put around the terminals get hot and come unsoldered. That would be a bad thing, right? Okay. Whoops. There we go. All right. I'm clean off the rosin, clip the leads. I'm going to change out some of those pregnant caps, inspect the board, and we'll fire it up. All right, here we go. Test after the installation of the new relay. Also changed out a couple of the pregnant caps. But I want to see if the protect relay itself will come up. Here we go. Moing, there she is. All right. We're looking at the output on the scope, no signal applied, just like we did before, all right? So I'm gonna rock the relay. No variation on the scope. Good sign. She appears stable. Now I'm gonna hook up a signal source. Let's make sure we're getting music out of this thing, but I'm sure it's fixed. All right, so live test time after replacing that speaker protect relay. So I have a CD player now rather than just a scope. So we are still using the audio test set to pass the signal to a couple of Polk audio speakers. Let's see what it sounds like. So I'm going to let it cook for a while, but I'm absolutely sure the problem was that old wore out speaker protect relay. And of course there was evidence that somebody had tried to fix it in the past. So cool repair, if you have a Sansui amp or any other amplifier where you're getting these abrupt pops in your audio, check that speaker protect relay. See you again. So as you can see from this video, if your amp suffers from snap crackles and pops, it could be a breakfast cereal problem, could be a terrible rapping song, or perhaps a faulty relay in your Sansui.